Alrighty, hello everybody, welcome back. This week we're going to talk about Placer County uh, for our to prepare for our tasting for Placer County wines. Um, Placer County is a very um, interesting county. I really enjoyed learning about it, um, especially with the railroad history and um, with the reservoirs, which we're going to go into, of course. Um, but yeah, I think um, Placer is really interesting. Um, you know, you're talking about Auburn and Granite Bay and such up there. Um, it's actually not a super well-known area for wine uh, yet. I feel like it's more popular for uh, beer, kind of. But um, nonetheless, it's a really nice area. It's up and coming. Lots of really um, heavily awarded wines are coming from this region. So it's something to explore if you haven't been there yet. So let's dive into that. Okay. Placer County. Placer is a word taken, uh, it's a Spanish word, um, which means sand or gravel deposits containing gold. Um, plas miners would wash away the gravel, leaving heavier gold, a process known as placer mining. Um, those who didn't mine actually became farmers. They harvested timber and worked for the Southern Pacific Railroad. Um, Placer County contains Auburn, Granite Bay, Lincoln, Colfax, Rockland, Loomis, Meadow Vista, Newcastle, and Roseville. And the last but not least. Um, so, yeah, just kind of a, a rich history um, with gold mining and kind of the new frontier of um, transportation and moving of goods during um, you know, this great expansion with the railroad industry. Um it's just kind of interesting. A lot of people refer to Placer County as the heart of the Sierra Foothills. Some people refer El Dorado County to the heart of the Sierra Foothills. I understand why now that I know more about it, um, but I do think it's really interesting. We'll get into that, of course. Um, why do I keep saying that? I don't know. Um, but anyways, I have a picture of a, a railroad track that runs through Secret Town. Um, it's a trestle um, in from 1870. So we're going to see that picture. So that picture actually comes from Auburn, I believe. So that's a bridge that still exists today. Um, a little bit more on the history of Placer County. Um, Claude uh, Chana discovers gold in Auburn Ravine and he planted the first grapevines. Uh, gold Rush brings a lot of immigrants, of course. Many miners became winemakers over time. Uh, by the 1860s, the Sierra Foothills had more vineyards and wineries than Sonoma and Napa combined. Very fun fact I've spat out before. Uh, 1920, prohibition, of course, causes major decline in the industry. Most vineyards are converted to pear, plum, and citrus orchards, with the railroads running up the middle of the county. Um, this is extremely important because this kind of I feel like what saves the, the city is like being this uh, central hub for transportation here. So um, even though prohibition causes a decline in the alcohol industry, you can see, and that's what happened in, in El Dorado County too, uh, we had uh, pears planted as well and other orchards um, because, you know, the, we couldn't make alcohol anymore and people, a lot of people didn't want to eat those grapes that we made for the wine. So um, we made what was popular instead, which was pears at the time. Um, so yeah, the area was largely known as the nation's fruit basket, and production was the main economy, economy of the region until the 1960s. So, very interesting to see uh, a shift in things there. So, um, why is this important? Um, well, this kind of saves the area as far as, you know, economy goes, but um, that railroad that, you know, even that we saw from back here, this is part of what's called the first transcontinental railroad. Uh, it's also known as the Pacific Railroad. It was built between 1863 and 1869. Um, it connected San Francisco Bay to the Alameda Terminal and then finally to Omaha, Nebraska. You can kind of see, um, from this nap map here, excuse me, um, Union Pacific was built, uh, built west, so it's the blue line, so it was built towards this direction. A Central Pacific was built east, and that's the red line here. And then a Western Pacific built the last leg, which is the green line, to complete the railroad. So that little branch right there. 
Um, this was extremely important, of course, because it transported passengers, mail, ammunition, and goods faster, safer, and much less expensive over time. So it was a huge means of economy to help uh, trade. So um, the Trestle Bridge is a bridge that still exists from the Southern Pacific Railroad. Um, current is a picture of current day the trestles bridge um so you can kind of see it's kind of interesting you can see like the pillars uh here in here transfer over um so yeah it's just like a little bit of history of the area you know i think a plaster county i never really thought of railroad before but it actually has a huge history in the area so and it, you can see it kind of running through whoop, right through there so very exciting um, okay, on another note of um, kind of structures here, um, there was a proposed uh, dam that was supposed to be built. It was actually proposed in the 1950s, would have been called the Auburn Dam. Um, this was created, or was not created, um, actually it never got created, it got canceled. But um, this was proposed to prevent flooding in Sacramento in the 1950s. So the big reason we wanted to prevent flooding in Sacramento was the capacity of the American River is something among, what was it, 2.3 two, uh, 2 million, um, uh, they, they're, I forget the unit for it, shoot, I'm totally blanking right now, but has to do with the gallons, it's like, oh, acre foot, I believe, 2.7 million acre foot of um, capacity. Anyways, uh, Folsom Dam only has uh, a million uh, capacity, so it, it's over, it's much over what we could hold back potentially with Folsom. So um, there were a lot of other reasons for this reservoir being built, but that was the biggest one, was to protect um, the cities and to protect people from flooding potentially in the future. Um, it would have been the tallest dam in California and one of the tallest in the nation. Uh, I think it was, it was supposed to be something like 850 feet tall. Very crazy. Um, but the, um, the work for this, yeah, it was proposed in the 1950s, but it wasn't until much, much later um, that they have come upon the conclusion that it would not be acceptable to build this because a fault line was discovered that would make the dam unsuitable for earthquakes so the project was canceled so the whole reason i'm telling you this story is to introduce the forest hill bridge which is kind of um I iconic to the area it's something for you to remember placer county by so um the forest hill bridge was actually built in order to cross over this proposed reservoir so it would have been um kind of I believe somewhere upstream or something along to this, but it was it, it was built to cross over this reservoir. So um, here's the Forest Hill Bridge. Uh, you've probably seen it before. Um, you know, it's this beautiful, gigantic bridge we have in Placer County. This is what it was supposed to look like. So this is obviously a Photoshop, but um, it would have been this bridge. You know, just imagine this whole valley kind of just flooded with water. So this is what it was designed to do to get people from A to B uh, to cross that reservoir. So very interesting. So uh, the reason I bring that up is because um, if you don't remember a very popular film, I guess it wasn't super popular. I don't know. I felt like it was at the time. A triple X movie uh, where Vin Diesel jumps out of a Corvette uh, flying off a of Forest Hill Bridge. So that was kind of a, um, I, just re I just noticed this person standing here. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, it was kind of a very popular scene in the in the movie, and that was shot on the Forest Hill Bridge. So, something interesting. Uh, another fun little factoid about uh, Placer County. In 1960, the Winter Olympics were hosted there in Squaw Valley. Yes, Squaw Valley is part of Placer County, up on the very, very north um, eastern side there. So, that this year in particular is when they debuted biathlon and women's speed skating. And I don't know if you are aware of what a biathlon is, um, but it's very interesting as well. It's a winter sport race that involves cross-country skiing and rifle shooting, among all things. And the reason that this is a sport is it's a Norwegian tradition for um, training their military. 
So I guess there is a Norwegian god of skiing. Like, there's a god of skiing over there, of all things. And he's also the god of hunting. So it was very, um, you know, traditional for them to, to believe that in order to honor this god, you know, they would ski and have to be able to maintain their breath and have a steady shot. Well, it also happens that this was a really intelligent way to train their military because there were some really um, like rural areas, lots of snow, of course, in Norway. And that would be cross-country skiing was the way that they could travel on foot in snow and kind of protect their homesteads from invaders or um, from anything else that was going on. So this is a this is a real thing. This is a real life application. It's not just um, you know for giggles. So uh, bobsledding actually at this time was not on the program. Not enough teams were competing to justify the cost of building the bobsled venue. So kind of interesting. I thought that was um, you know kind of fascinating in its own way. So anyways, enough with the fun facts. We'll dive into the wine. Um, I just wanted to give you guys some information on the area to help you, like, I don't know, value it more or just remember it and kind of, you know, talking points for people about, you know, like Plas Placer County versus El Dorado or Placer County versus Amador. You know, it's just kind of um, some interesting little factoids there, I guess. You won't be tested on it, so don't worry. Okay, Placer County wineries. There are over 20 wineries. Some say, some sources say over 25. There's a Placer Wine and Ale Trail. Uh, very cute. Uh, as far as AVAs go, this is, um, you know, just like Calaveras, this is another region where uh, Sierra Foothills is their only AVA designation as of now. Um, it's definitely possible in the future for them to develop their own. Um, but we'll see how that goes. And as we know, it's a long process. It takes a lot of time, a lot of paperwork to get that accomplished. So we'll see. Uh, vineyard elevation, anywhere between 800 to 2,000 feet above sea level. The soil type that they have is decomposed granite with uh, pockets of loam. Uh, I've read that it's very dry and infertile, which leads to smaller berries, with more flavor and tannins. So this is kind of, this is a map for Placer, um, Wine County, um, the Wine and Ale Trail. Also, this is kind of cute, this uh, Life at Its Peak Visit Placer, very cute. Um, and of course, uh, information from Wine Searcher, if you are interested. Okay, so Mount Vernon is gonna be the first wine that we're gonna taste in this lineup. Um, from what I was told and from what resources say, this is very likely the first, um, you know, substantial winery established in Placer County, so 1996, um, as a, as a resurgence from the um, downfall of Prohibition, of course, so the most recent in modern times. Um, it is also the largest winery in Placer County. Um, they have a really... Uh, like beautiful venue, but they have something unique where they um, they have this series of wine labels called the Global Journey, and they are the only winery in the world to have a certified breast cancer label for breast cancer research uh, from Dr. Ernie Badai. So with every purchase, twelve and a half percent of the proceeds goes, I mean, go toward finding a cure for breast cancer. So that's something really. Um, Cool that they do to help give back to the community into the world. So yes, 1996 is when they had their first vineyard plantings. Uh, they had seven acres planted. 1999 was their first commercial harvest. Um, the tasting room, which you can see here on a picture on the right, it's very cute, it's very beautiful. Uh, it's actually an old restored milk house built in 1950. Uh, they have very large production tanks, 11,000 gallon capacity. That's huge. That's ginormous. Um, eight tons per hour uh, produced uh, speed for harvest, production speed. That's, uh, that's pretty intense as well. That's 16,000 pounds per hour, which would be, that'd be basically, um, well, yeah, I guess that's about average, eight tons. But anyways, gotta do what you gotta do. So the wines that they have are the Breast Cancer Research Rosé BCR. Uh, I believe that's the one that I purchased that we're going to try. I think that's the one. 
Um, they also do a Viognier, Pinot Noir, Cabernet Sauvignon, an Estate Barbera, Petit Syrah, a Marsan, and a White Port, which is kind of interesting. I don't think I've had a White Port Excuse me. before, so that would be fun. Uh, beautiful Caves, beautiful venue. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, on to Vigna Castellano Winery. Is owned by the Mendez family. Um, this is a Spanish heritage winery. Um, they've been a long time residents of Placer County. Um, winery was built in 1999. They've been here for a while now. Um, again, they focus on their Spanish heritage and Spanish varieties. They also practice sustainable agriculture. Uh, they limit their water usage by monitoring soil moisture content. A lot of people do that, to be honest, but um, I'm glad that they do too. So I'm very happy to see that they're doing that. Uh, flagship wines, Tempranillo, that's what we're gonna taste. Um, Best of Class in San Francisco Chronicle. Very excited to try this with you guys. They also make an Abuelito blend, uh, Best of California, Cabernet Franc, Best of Region, they also make a Monastrell, which is also in Rosemore Vedra, Syrah, and um, Grenache, which in Spain is pronounced Garnacha. So, fun fact there. They stick to the traditional labelings from that country. Okay, third on our list is Lone Buffalo Winery. Um, this guy, this family is fantastic. Uh, Phil and Jill, Phil and Jill Maddox, they're the winery owners. Phil has been making wine for over 40 years, which is just amazing. Uh, when you walk in there, they just like treat you like their long lost child. Like you go in and you say, hey, I'm interested in learning about your wine. You know, even if you tell them I'm coming from the college, you know, please tell me about you. Like they just take you with open arms and they're there literally pouring at the bar. So that picture is no joke. That is Phil, by the way. Nice guy. Um, so their emphasis is food-friendly Rhone and Mediterranean varieties with a twist of cowboy and Old West philosophy. So it is kind of interesting that we have just a really wide variety of winery personalities um, here in Placer County. I really appreciate that because it helps each of them stand out and um, kind of go with their theme. Um, you know, like Viña Castellano, we have the the Raging Bull, we have Spain on their flag, um, Mount Vernon, I'm not quite sure where that name comes from, but, um, you know, I appreciate and respect their history, but then Lone Buffalo is just really fun, and I really enjoy the, um, Old West philosophy and the Native, nod to Native American culture as well. So, the meaning of the Lone Buffalo. So the lone buffalo is a nod to Native American culture, of course. The buffalo resembles strength and resilience in the face of enroaching civilization. So a lone buffalo, a survivor, quote, indicates hope and renewal for humanity and harmony among all. So the lone buffalo winery represents a beacon of hope for a reemergence of winemaking in Placer County. Each wine label is decorated with its own unique symbols to tell the story of that wine. So you get to see that in the next picture. Um, so yes, you can kind of see they have like the Thunderbird. Um, I think this is like the Medicine Man wheel. We have some kind of, um, you know, uh, wildlife here. I uh, use some feathers and some arrows. So anyways, if you actually go on their website and you look at these individual wines, like the symbols do tell a story with the wine. So I really do appreciate that. I think it's really cool. Um, so yes, they have a Viognier, Tarantes, one of my all-time favorites. I actually personally worked with the grapes um, that they they purchased grapes from the same grower that I used to purchase grapes from, and that Tarantes is fantastic. So totally recommend it. It's so good. It's so good. Um, they have a Pinot Noir Rosé, a Sangiovese Rosé, they have Rhone Blends, Zinfandel, Malbec, and Tempranillo, of course. So I'm very excited to try that with you guys. I believe we're going to be trying a Rhone Blend by them, called like the, where the Buffalo Rhone, I said a Rome, it's where the Buffalo Rhone, so I appreciate the pun there, um, it keeps it fun. But yeah, uh, really good stuff, I'm excited for you guys to actually try this. Okay, and last on our list is Le Casque, um, also just known as Casque Winery. 
this winery is a little more recent. It was established in 2011. So uh, Cask refers to um, Adrian Cask, who was a, um, or also uh, to the Cask French helmet. Um, the story goes back to the helm that was first created in the 1900s by uh, General August Louis Adrian. Um, he was inspired by a soldier who survived a gunshot to his head um, by storing his like mess bowl, his food bowl, under his helmet, uh, under his cask. So he then designed a new helmet for French soldiers called the um, calotte. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm sorry. That allowed the helmet to fit snugly on the head to provide additional protection. Um, and so they just specialize in Rhone varieties. And I'm going to go through this quickly because my battery's about to die. Okay, so they have the Sargent, Red Dessert Wine, Cab Franc, Colote, Red Wine Blend, Syrah, Grenache Blanc, Marsan, Roussan, Viognier, and Sauvignon Blanc. So, yes, very good stuff. Um, most everything on their website won over 90 points from Wine Spectator. So, um, you know, this place is no joke. They have some really good stuff. So, again, very excited to share this with you guys, very excited to see what we think about the region and the characteristics that um, are common among all of these. So, anyways, I'm going to wrap up before my battery dies. Hopefully, that was enough information for you guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this and learned something new, and I will see you guys next time.